from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by the well. Amen. Look with me, if you will, at verse 12. So he looked this way and that way, and when he saw no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. I want to talk today, if you will, from the subject, don't take matters into your own hands. Don't take matters into your own hands. There is a tendency among all of us to think that we know more than God. When to move and when not to move. When to act and when to react. But the truth of the matter is, when you're dealing with spiritual matters, it's always best to check with God. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Well, God is the only one that can orchestrate and administrate the outcome that he wants to see. Oh yeah. Now, the text says, and you all know the story of Moses, he was placed in a basket because an edict had gone out from Pharaoh to kill all the male babies. It was an attempt on the part of Satan to prohibit God's will from being done. Well, the book says that when Moses could be hidden no longer, in other words, the older he got, the more he looked like a boy. Because when you were a small child, it's hard to distinguish from this for the parent. Changing the boy's diaper. Then you know what you have. But Satan had concocted a scheme. He wanted to snuff out any possibility of God's will being done. So the story goes that they hid Moses and Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to wash. Mm -hmm. Now I oftentimes would ask the question, why would she leave the carpet of the palace mm -hmm. to go down and wash in dirty water? Mm -hmm. She had the best of body oil. She had servants. She had warm pools. She had clean running water. Why would you go down to the Nile River mm -hmm. and wash that was filled with uh, all kinds of microscopic organisms and there were live beasts there in the water known as crocodiles and there were some snakes there too. Well, as I understood it, the more I read it, stood up on that, that the Nile River was regarded as the river of fertility. And since she had no child, she thought that washing in the water would help to induce her pregnancy. Not only that, but every so often, they would throw baby in the Nile to satisfy the God of the Nile. But it was at that time that God allowed her to come down. He intersected them putting the baby there, which was Moses' sister mom, in order to protect him. That she came down and then God triggered her maternal instinct. She looked in that basket. She could not resist that smile on Moses' face. She said, bring him to me. Amen. Then she made him her son. Amen. And then she had his sister to go get the mama in order to nurse the boy. You see, God knows how to intercept Amen. the thing that we do. I don't care how smart you are, you can't have smart God. God used the very thing that he thought, that Pharaoh thought, was going to let them out. He used that to bring Moses up. Because the God we serve is a mighty God. He's a God of providence. Nothing happens by mistake. God is the orchestrator. He is the administrator. He is the divine keeper. He's the one that moves and shakes things. He looks up one and another and another.
impress upon us the need to remind all of our children and grandchildren that they come from God. Right. And if you want to do well in life, you got to honor God while you're living. Yeah, right. You got to seek God in your youth. Don't wait until you get old. Oh, 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 oh. Can't do nothing. Can't raise a hand. Can't raise a leg. And now you want to go. God. But now God wants to. But it would be better if you came while you were Moses goes out. He leaves the comfort of the palace. Mm -hmm. Go out to look on him. One of his brothers and sisters. The Bible said here that he came to pass in those days when he was grown. He was a full grown man, 48 years old. He went out and saw and looked upon his brethren and their burdens. Mm -hmm. Moses could not rest well in the palace, eating the best of food and knowing that my brethren was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Come on. I don't understand how some of us can eat good, ride high, and have no regard for anybody else. You ought to have some compassion on somebody that's, that's a lot less blessed than you, who don't have access to what you do, who can't live as comfortably as you live. You ought to have some compassion on them. being afflicted by the Egyptian. And then Moses does something that all of us ought to be mindful not to do. Mm -hmm. He took matters and do his own hand. Mm -hmm. And he made a conscious decision that he was not going to stand by and allow a heathen mm -hmm. to lay hands on God's own people. Come on now. So what Moses does, he looked here, Amen. he looked there, Amen. he looked around, Amen. didn't see nobody. Right. Then Moses decided, I'm going to take him out. Right. Moses took him out. Right. Moses killed him. Right. And then he tried, then he hid his body in the sand. Uh -huh. Now Moses did not know that the one who made it, the one who created it, right. the one who saw you who see the whole thing. Yeah. But the Bible said that the eye of the Lord of everybody, yeah. beholding both the good and the evil, he sees what you think he doesn't see. Right. But he is indeed a good expert technician. He sees the heart of everyone that he has created. He knows that that smile is just a frown turned upside down. You can fool me, you can fool others, but you can't fool God. So God is a heart that He's a mind regulator. And they let them by your thoughts. God don't know that for the thoughts of fool. Moses looked and he killed that man. And what he does is he creates an avalanche of problems. No one, let me share it with you. Sometimes uh, we can do a good thing the wrong way at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. He had what I call unpurified zeal. There are a lot of us who have a zeal for God, but not according to understanding. You must make the difference between un purified zeal and making a hasty decision. Mm. All right. A lot of us are very impetuous. We're like a touch hole. Mm. We touch us wrong, we 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 ready to get with you. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You you got to learn that not always are you gonna open your mouth. Right. Sometimes you all just hush. Okay. Shut up mm. and let God help yeah. us. God will deal with you. Yeah. If you yeah. just be still and lean on him. Yeah, yeah. Well, now Moses didn't do that. Yeah. And now the prophet said that on the next day, whenever that was, he beheld two of his brethren fighting with one another. Mm -hmm. No doubt there was a dispute that was personal. And so Moses thought that because I've shown you that I'm with you, I've shown you that I am willing to sacrifice my cover for your protection. Mm -hmm. Moses steps in and offers the gesture 
why are you brethren striving with one another? All right. hmm. The Bible said, Blessed is the peace maker, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. Not not enough Christians are willing to make peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you see folks striving, why, if God gives you the wisdom and the opportunity, why would you try to go for peace? Mm. We spend too much time running from everything. Mm. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm. What made it is for you to deal with? Mm. Since God did it before you, but when you can't deal with peace, when you can't go for peace, that's how you let God help. All right, now. But when you can't, don't ever be afraid to step in and work a peace between the brethren. Hmm. One of the worst sins that can be carried out in the church is division hmm. between members. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Because you got folk in these churches who think that they are privileged, hmm. that they are entitled hmm. to do whatever they want to do. Hmm. And should nobody stop them from acting on their own accord. Hmm. Well, I got news for you. I heard Paul tell the church of Corinth, I didn't die for it. Peter didn't die for it. Apollo didn't die for it. Jesus died for it. The church belonged to him and not them. This is God's house. I'm just a pastor here. I thank God for a house to preach and a house to serve, but my servant is unto God. I'm telling you, you would have thought that the Hebrew would have appreciated Moses. But that's not what they did. Mm -hmm. They took issue with him. Mm -hmm. Said, who made you a judge All right. over us? Mm -hmm. Who elevated you to be our authority, mm -hmm. Moses? Mm -hmm. He don't tell us what to do. All right. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then they said, are you not going to kill us? Like you did the Egyptians the other day. And more than God's feet. Because now more know what? The secret is out. <laughs> this thing has got back to Pharaoh and I can't stay here. Huh. Let me tell you the danger of taking matters into your own hand. When you take matters to your own hand, this is what you do. You cause others mm -hmm. to suffer because of you. Right. You see, God was going to use both to deliver them from the hands of the oppressor. Mm -hmm. But because of his actions, he delayed the process. Mm -hmm. And also, he became disqualified to serve God. Wow. Moses understood, I messed up. And now he is on Egypt's most wanted list. He has to flee because Pharaoh sought to kill him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Moses ran. From the conflict of Egypt. He ran from power. He ran from position. He ran from ease. He ran from luxury. And now he confined to the desert. Yes, he is. Eating wild food. Yes, he is. Having to hunt down his meals. Sleeping on a rock when he had a pillow. All right. Now he's in the wilderness on the backside of the mountain. So when you take matters into your own hand, no, no, number one, you disqualify yourself from further serving. Okay. And then you also delay. He delayed Israel's deliverance by 40 years. Hmm. All because he took matters in his own hand. Okay. And many of you right now, your prayers are not being answered as quickly as you desire, and you have no peace, because you take the matter into your own hands. Yes. Oh, to move without God means to not move with God. Mm -hmm. To move without God is to move on your own. Yes. To move without God is to delay your deliverance. Mm -hmm. For you take matters into your own hands. He was exiled for 40 years. And now God has to get out of Moses what he just put in Moses. It took 40 years in the desert. Wondering. Many nights and days, I know Moses thought about it. But I just kept still and let God have a little business. I'll still be in the palace. 
But I thank God for two things. That the mornings of our lives don't dictate the evening. He met up in the morning. But the Bible said in the next chapter, while right. morning was keeping the sheep, while he was hiding the livestock of Jethro, yeah. he saw a bush on fire. Yeah. He stopped to investigate. Yeah. And he got close up. The law says, Moses, stop. Than to be totally dismissed. Mm. Mm. 
God fired Saul and Saul didn't even know it. Then he raised up David to take Saul's place. Because Saul took matters into his own hand. He played high priest when that was Samuel's job. And a lot of us ought to know what your job is. Stick with what God told you to do. Don't try to tell a preacher how to preach. Tell him never your call. That's God's business. Not your business. You know when we we have been on trying to tell me the God. Now here you are just a lay person, and that's important. I'm going to downplay that. Because Jesus told Peter to feed the sheep. But the sheep don't tell us how to lead. All right. The shepherd leads the sheep. We got some goats mixed in with the sheep in them. They look like sheep, but they butt like goats. Everything is a butt. Everything is yeah, a good butt. Sit down on your Amen. And leave God work alone. He'll see it through. I implore you. Not to take matters into your own hands. Because if you do, you're going to mess it up once every time. In, in my conclusion, he says that in the book of Proverbs, in all of thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise. In thine own eyes, but trust in the Lord. And, we, and I know and you know, he will work it out. Is there anybody here today? Have you taken them out into your own hand? If you have, you need to repent. And ask God to forgive you. For trying to play God in somebody else's life. You ought to ask God to forgive you for you trying to tell God what's best for folk that He created and He knows all about. It. It's all right to give advice, it's all right to give opinions, but based it on what the Bible has to say and not how you feel. If it was me, I'd have left that style on that one. Well, ain't none of you. Huh? And some of y'all, when, when you when you left, you already had somewhere to go. Huh? I remember one time a preacher told me to say, uh, Joe, the Bible says to live off of God. That means put your job to the post office. Uh, about me preaching, I didn't get that no more. I'm not going to quit my job when I'm about to retire. Because what you say, let God tell me that. Right. And you know what? One year later, he got a job. He went back to work. <laughs> now, how I left my job, I left the church. Because we have a conflict. Now, just think that the church wasn't paying me enough. Here I am without a job. And no church. They couldn't take care of my appetite. <laughs> Y'all miss nobody. <laughs> Y'all need to learn how to think for yourself. And hear from God, not from somebody else. There are, there are folk with trouble in their home. If you can't give them the book, shut your mouth. Amen. Because every experience is different. And book is different. 